Our Father in heaven, we honor and glorify your name, for you alone is worthy of our praise. We humbly come before you this day to offer our praises and thanksgiving. You are our refuge and shelter, a strong foundation of our faith. We are always humbled by your power, and our lips will always speak of your goodness and loving kindness. We continue to put our confidence to your holy presence, our prayers and supplications. I pray for our nation in this time of crisis. Pour on us your abundant grace, that we may see our inadequacies to fight this battle with the unseen virus. That we may acknowledge our inequities when we give self-interest of more importance than service to others. And that we may acknowledge that the depths of your wisdom in addressing what seems like the never-ending crisis that we experience 
beginning with the pandemic of COVID virus to varying calamities, is what this nation needs. Give us the faith to trust you alone, as you have promised that if we seek your, first your kingdom, you can bring all these calamities to pass. I pray for our president and all his cabinet members, the Senate and the Congress, and our judiciary, that there would be unity in their decisions and leading us to a peaceful and orderly life with dignity and honor. We thank you for our Church, Jesus Montalban, for continually binding us together in your love and in unity through the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us as your body to make the best use of every opportunity to make Christ known even in these times when our movements are limited. Unify our spirits, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ, the Head, our Lord and Savior. Thank you for the dedication of our leaders, led by our Pastor Arnel Aristoteles for their able leadership in maintaining order in the affairs of the church. We also pray for each family. Continue to protect us from COVID-19 infection and from all forms of diseases. Some of us were tested positive and we thank you for being our healer and comforter during these times of challenging situation. We entrust to you our daily needs including a good internet connection for our work, our children's homeschooling, and to keep our connections with one another as your body. As we celebrate Mother's Day today, and as we honor all mothers, we bless your name, for it is you who taught us your perfect love, so we could share the same to our children and to the little ones that you have entrusted to us. Thank you for the life of Sister Sara Reiso Cruz, who is a living testimony of your abounding grace to all mothers like her. Anoint every word that she will speak today so that we could celebrate Mother's Day according to your faith. We give you all the honor and the glory as we pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today, we remember the life, the suffering, the crucifixion, the death, the resurrection, the second coming of Jesus. In light of this truth, we are celebrating the Lord's table or the communion. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 29, Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks from the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord, eats and drinks judgment on himself. Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Lord, we are commemorating and celebrating the ordinance of the Lord's table or the communion. We pray and confess all our sins before you. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness that we have done before you and before our neighbors. Whether they are done by commission or by omission. Purify us so that we become worthy to receive these elements, these sacred elements, Father, that you have set before us. We would like to offer our life as a holy sanctuary that is before you, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us all lift the bread and together say, Thank you, Jesus, for your body which is broken for me. Let's all partake. And now, let us all lift the cup and all together say, Thank you, Jesus, 
for your blood which is shed for me for the forgiveness of my sin. Let's all drink. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for the celebration of the Lord's table. It reminds us once again about the life, about the suffering, about the death, about the resurrection, and the second coming of Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We pray that today's message will strengthen your faith. And if this happened, we'd love to hear your story. Send us your story to our FB page or you may send it to our personal messenger. And if you want to be prayed for or ask spiritual guidance or join a Bible study group or discipleship group, just message us at GCF Montalban FB page or you may direct your concern to Brother Carlo Azilo or yours truly, Pastor Arnel G. Aristoteles. And if you believe that this ministry has blessed you so much and you would like to support this ministry financially, you can give your tithes and offering through online transfer or deposit it at our Banco de Oro. Our video account is GCF North Inc. with account number 01022800 Or you may also give your tithes and offering through Palawan Express, Western Union, Cebuano Lovillier, M. Lovillier, and LBC Padala under the name of Carlo Azilo. And Brother Carlo will deposit your sent amount to our church video account and we will send back the copy of the deposit slip to you for accountability purposes. Again, I pray that the Lord will bless you as you listen to the message for today. Magandang umaga mga kapatid sa SIBAP. Isang pribileyo po muli na makasama kayo sa umagang ito at makapaghatid sa inyo ng ating update tungkol po sa SIBA Project Pag-asa. Una po na is kong pasalamatan in behalf of the National Office at ang ating NC at ang SIBA Project Pag-asa Task Force. Salamat po sa bawat isa sa inyo at sa bawat iglesia na nagbigay na po sa ating project na ito. Tayo po ngayon ay meron ng nalikom na 18 million 500 pesos at ang natitira na lamang po para sa ating campaign na ito ay 2,500,000. At meron na lamang po tayong dalawang buwan na natitira hanggang June 30 para mabuo po natin ang 21 million. So, pwede ho kayo magbigay. Naghahanap tayo ng isang libong tao o iglesia na makapagbibigay po ng 2,500 each. Ganon din, pwede rin ho hatiin kung hindi nyo kaya di 1,250, dalawa ho kayo. Or kung apat naman kayo, 625 na apat na katao. Or pag hindi pa rin, 500, lima ho kayo. Hanggang sa uh, June 30 po natin gagawin ito, mga kapatid. Salamat po. At alam ko po, ako'y lubos na nananampalataya kasama ng ating leadership na atin ho maaabot ang 21 milyong ito bago po mag-June 30. Kaya nga ho pala, maaari ho kayo magbigay sa ating BDO account na Conservative Baptist Association of the Philippines. Kung yan ay cheque with INC, kailangan kompleto pong pangalan natin sa account number na 00163-801-5010. At sa GCash o Paymaya, ang atin naman pong number ay isulat nyo na 0933 812 4232 Salamat po mga kapatid sa ating pakikiisa at sa ating pagsakripisyo para po sa gusaling ito na mapapas sa atin by June 30. Ito po yung ating SIBA Project Pag-asa. God bless you all. Our scripture passage is found in Isaiah chapter 66 verse 13a. Again, Isaiah chapter 66 verse 13a. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. May the Lord bless the reading of His word. Happy Mother's Day! I'm honored to be entrusted to share the message with you today. And I pray that you will be blessed and encouraged, whether you are a mother or not. God's word is for everyone. 
Before I start, I would just like to honor two lovely women and three awesome gentlemen. First of all, my mom. Pre-pandemic, I could visit her often, but of course, COVID changed everything. Thankfully, this year, I got to visit with my family, complete with the requisite quarantine to make sure I would not bring any virus with me. Among our many bonding activities while I was there was watching Reply 1988 together. We watched the whole series and swimming together. Do you know that even when she gives me a head start, my mom still wins swimming races against me? I'll be sharing more about her as I go on with my message. I would also like to honor my mother-in-law who has welcomed me like a real daughter and been a great source of love, encouragement, comfort, and prayers in my role as a wife and mom. And then of course, these three gentlemen who have greatly blessed me and Mark by being our sons. I love being a mom to them. And although today is Mom's Day and not Son's Day, I just want to emphasize how blessed I am to have them. Our passage for today is very short. As read earlier, it is Isaiah 66, 13a, which says, As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. Now, why did God, our Father, choose to compare his love to that of a mother. This is not the only passage that he does it. We can also find similar comparisons in Hosea 13 verse 8, where God is described as a mother bear whose cubs have been taken from her. Deuteronomy 32 verses 11 to 12, where he is described as a mother eagle caring for her young. And then another verse in Isaiah, Isaiah 49 verse 15, where God is compared to a nursing mother. There are many more examples, but I just wanted to show you that this is not an isolated case. I'm no theologian, so I will not delve into the scholarly reasons why this may have been done. But although many men are good nurturers, my dad is one of them and I'm married to another, Mothers are generally the ones associated with nurturing. A mom is many things and has many roles in the family. And today, we will look at her role as a comforter. What is comfort and how does a mother comfort her child? Merriam-Webster has several definitions for the word comfort. But as this verse suggests action, I chose to focus on the definitions of comfort as a verb. And these are one, to give strength and hope to, or in one word, cheer. And second, to ease the grief or trouble of, or console. Let's look at the word cheer. What comes to your mind? This makes me think of Andy and Joshua's soccer games that we used to watch. We would stand on the sidelines and shout encouragement, laugh and screech when the team makes a goal, or in Joshua's case, when he as a keeper would prevent one. If someone dared to hurt the boys, whether intentionally or unintentionally, irritation would rise up and so would this intense desire to protect them. Then, at the end of each game, we affirm them with words like, Good game, that was a super catch, your defense was great, what do you want to eat on the way home? Whether they won or lost the game. Aside from giving strength and hope, other synonyms for cheer would be motivate, encourage, rally, and inspire. Often, our moms are our number one cheerleaders. This is true for me. You are seeing pictures of me with my mom and my dad in one of them when we were both much younger. Isn't she lovely and wasn't I cute? 
Although I am beginning to have what I call golden moments, as I am still in denial about them being senior moments, I remember my mom cheering me on as a kid and as I got older. Whether it be schoolwork or issues with friends, I could count on her to give me strength and hope in different situations. This continued as a young adult, then when I got married, and now that I have kids. In fact, especially in this later time, I have found her encouragement very important as I raise my kids with Mark. Early on, she would help babysit them so that we could get some rest. When I was very pregnant with Andy and soon to give birth, she would sleep with me on the nights that Mark had to work at the hospital to make sure I wouldn't be alone in case I went into labor or got vertigo, something that I've been struggling with for years. Occasionally, she would take the boys overnight so Mark and I could get away for a day or two. Now that literally gave us strength. Here are pictures of Lolo and Lola enjoying time with their apples. After they moved to Palawan, my mom and my dad still made sure to be present at events that were important to me and my family. In fact, this has only ceased lately and hopefully temporarily because of travel and safety restrictions with the pandemic. I like to think that I, along with Mark, I'm also the number one cheerleader of our kids. I think, well, actually I know, I often embarrass them with my penchant for posting things about them, but it's because I am so proud of them and I like to talk about them a lot. Colossians 3 verse 21 says, Fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. Well, I take this to mean that mothers shouldn't either. Parents have many responsibilities to the children that God has entrusted to us. And cheering them on is not just something nice to do, but something that we should be doing in part so they will not be discouraged. Now, cheering on our children doesn't need to be an extravagant gesture. It doesn't always involve shouting from the sidelines when they are playing games, but it does mean being in the sidelines being able to attend programs and extracurricular activities that are important to them is one way. Playing with them too. Even when they're older, you can still play together. Our boys still like to play with us and our games range from physical games like badminton, nerdy games like scattergories and fibbage, and even just silly games like speed or taco cat goat cheese pizza which is definitely as hilarious a game as its title suggests. Simply making snacks for them when they're studying or working on something is also a way to cheer them up. And then speaking their love language is another tangible way to cheer on and encourage our kids. But let me emphasize that whether your child likes physical touch acts of service, quality time, gifts, or words of affirmation, the latter, the words of affirmation, are always important. And the flip side, words that tear them down, will definitely do the opposite of cheering and encouraging them on. The Bible warns us in Proverbs 18 verse 21, life and death are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Proverbs 15.4 reminds us that a soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. It's hard to be a comforting presence in their lives if all they hear from us is criticism and if they feel pressure not to let us down because we will get angry at them for any perceived failure on their part. Then, of course, there's praying for them, alone or with them, 
this is a big strength booster for them and it also points them back to the Lord time and time again. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 reminds us to pray without ceasing. And John 16.24b says, Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. So we have looked at the word cheer. So now let's look at consume. As I mentioned earlier, this means to ease the grief or trouble of. Other synonyms would be to reassure, show compassion, fortify, and soothe. Well, my mom has always been a safe space for me. I've never felt judged, even if I make choices and decisions that she may not always agree with. Thus, I tell her almost anything and share many of my struggles and anxieties with her. One exception, though, is I hold off on sharing about marital issues as a wise woman, who is also one of our ninangs, told me at my bridal shower to avoid sharing about fights or other such problems with your family, especially your mom. You know why? Because later on, you'll patch up your fight and all will be well between you and your husband. But your mom will still be angry at him because moms don't like to see their kids get hurt. Thankfully though, Mark and I don't have many fights and I do share with my mom other struggles I have, especially my own motherhood struggles. She has and still consoles me when I have conflicts with the kids. She's good at giving me alternative perspectives over issues and is able to help me sort out what is not negotiable to me as a mom and what things I can gloss over to make life more harmonious. She's also there for me when I'm grieving over things that make my kids sad or issues that have pulled me down and discouraged me in other areas of my life. And when I have a headache or am feeling stressed, she still gives the best head rubs ever. You know what? I think you're never too old to want your mom. How do I console my kids? Of course, when they were younger, it was all about kissing owies, taking care of them when they're sick and things like that. As the kids have grown, their issues have become more complicated and this task has become harder too. As I mentioned earlier, moms generally don't like to see their kids hurt. And while I tend to be very vocal about the successes of my kids, of course they also suffer disappointments, not getting what they want, being hurt, and all those things that break a mom's heart. Of the two, cheering and consoling, I personally find cheering easier and consoling more difficult because you're treading on hurt feelings or discouraged spirits. But 1 Thessalonians 5.11 tells us, For this reason, comfort one another and build up one another as also you do. And Galatians 6.2 reminds us to bear each other's burdens. Hugging them, sitting silently with them, sometimes crying with them, and praying for them and with them are my main expressions to help bear their burdens. I may not do it right sometimes, but I try my best to let them know we're behind them and beside them in their journeys. No, sometimes as moms, we give our kids instructions or warnings that don't get followed. Then if something goes wrong and they feel hurt or discouraged because of it, the first words out of our mouths are, I told you so, or we assign blame. I'm guilty of this at times, but let me tell you, I have fast learned that this is not a good way to console or comfort our children. So even if you really, really want to say it, hold your tongue, 
our kids need to know it's safe to share with us, that they won't get reminded of all their mistakes or be faced with a sermon when they're already feeling down. This is not to mean that you should not discipline them if the issue at hand calls for it, or that you don't take opportunities that come up to help them improve themselves or their skills. But let's heed the words in James 1 verses 19 to 20 that say, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So far, we have looked at two elements of giving comfort, cheering and consoling. I have shared with you how I have seen this lived out in my relationship with my mom and how I have, how I have also strived to apply it in my own motherhood journey. Truly, joys shared are multiplied and sorrows shared are divided. Now I know that I am speaking from a position of privilege here, having a wonderful relationship with my mom, and despite my many imperfections and mistakes, having a pretty good relationship with my sons too. I hope that they will agree. But maybe some of you lost your moms at a young age or didn't have a good relationship with them. Some of you may be grieving the loss of your mom or the loss of your child, or not ever having had the chance to have a child. Mother's Day is always kind of a mixed feeling holiday. It can bring a lot of joy and happiness. It can also magnify loneliness or discouragement and despair. But as we have been talking about how a mother comforts her children, let's remember that there is a second part to this short passage. And here, the Lord is speaking. He says, so will I comfort you. And God is not imperfect like an earthly mother. He nurtures and comforts us from the great and perfect love he has for us. So let's go back to our definition. To comfort is to cheer and to console. So how does God cheer us on? The Bible tells us that God delights in us and loves us. Zephaniah 3.17 says, The Lord your God will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Then Psalm 37 verse 23 says, the steps of a man are ordered by the Lord who takes delight in his journey. There are countless verses that talk about God's love for us, with John 3.16 being one of the favorites. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Then Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. How can we not draw strength from the knowledge that God has loved us enough to send his son to die for us and further that he delights in us and has a plan for our lives that will give us hope? Philippians 4.13 says, I am able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There is comfort in these promises. I can just imagine the Lord standing on the sidelines saying excitedly, Come on, Sarah, you can do it. Look to me. Trust in my good plans for you. That is God cheering us on. But how does God console us? Cheering and consoling can often overlap experientially, and focusing on God's promises so consoles us in the difficult paths we are going through. Some out of many promises we can hold on to when we are hurting or anxious are the following. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. 
Psalm 28 verses 7 and 8 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him, and He helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song I praise Him. The Lord is the strength of His people, a fortress of salvation for His anointed one. Psalm verse 23 verse 4 says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In my journey as a mom, and also in this current journey through the pandemic that we're all traversing, God has comforted me time and time again. Pre-pandemic, having two adult sons meant that although they lived at home, we hardly ever saw them. And our youngest was a pretty busy boy himself. The silver lining of the pandemic was having them home with us suddenly 24-7. But I don't want to trivialize or romanticize what we have gone through and are continuing to go through. Although we had the three boys safe at home with us all the time, they were also three disappointed boys. Josh was set to graduate from grade school and move to a new school. Andy had just started a play that had to be abruptly cut. And also he was getting to the end of his college journey. And Matthew had just been accepted for a master's degree in the US, in New York no less, which at the beginning of the pandemic was the worst hit US city. As already mentioned, we moms do not like to see our kids disappointed. So while I was happy that they were safe and well, my heart also ached for them. I longed to comfort them, but I also needed comforting. I have talked about a mother's comfort and God's comfort separately in this message, but in my life, they are closely intertwined. As I drew strength and consolation from the Lord, then I was more able to give the same kind of comfort to the boys. 2 Corinthians 1 verses 3 to 4 says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. Thankfully, the boys are tough. And while I like to think that my presence and support played a part, I know they also drew strength and consolation from the Lord to roll with the punches and continue to thrive even through these difficult times. Josh graduated virtually and so far has been enjoying and doing well in his new school. Andy was able to finish his thesis, a collection of stories he wrote, and is now finishing up college and has also had the opportunity to do some online theater productions. And as many of you know, we did eventually have to say goodbye to Matthew, who moved, pandemic and all, to New York and is deep into his master's studies. In fact, he's, uh, he is already graduating from his first course this May. Now our focus has been on mothers because it's our special day. But I hope each one of you listening today will come away with the, the certainty that we can all find strength or cheer and consolation in the God of all comfort. In 1901, Louis Albert Banks, a noted pastor and theologian of his day, wrote about this verse that we've been looking at. Are you lonely? Here's a chance to creep into the motherly arms of God and find peace. Are you sorrowful? You may come and put your head upon his breast and weep there and find infinite comfort. Are you sinful? Then there is a heart throbbing with infinite compassion and pity and love. Come pillow your head here and find forgiveness. What a description. 
it makes me think of God hugging me very tightly. Before I close, I would just like to invite you all to find comfort, love, and salvation in our Father. As I mentioned earlier when I quoted John 3.16, God loved us so much that he sent his Son to die for us. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. God offers us the comfort of being secure in his love, not just for today, but for all eternity. And this is nothing we can earn. We just need to accept this gracious gift from him. I hope if any of you watching now don't know the Lord in a personal way, today would be the day that you would ask him to be the Lord and Savior in your life. Then you can truly experience the lasting comfort that God gives his people. In the days ahead, may we let God hug us tightly and mother us through both our joys and pains. Let's pray. Lord, we say a special prayer for the mothers today. I praise and thank you for all the love you showered on me through my mom. We pray that you strengthen each mom who's listening and fill her with your love so that she can also comfort and strengthen her children. May each mother feel validated and loved today. Thank you, Lord, that you long to comfort each of us, mom or not. We thank you that our comfort abounds through Christ. Nothing in the world can bring us the comfort and peace that you alone can offer. Thank you that you understand our trials and you care. Through our own struggles and pain, Help us to be your vessels to offer comfort and strength to others who are hurting. Thank you, Lord, that through every weakness and hard place, your strength is displayed in our lives. We can't do it on our own, but you can through us. Your power is mighty within us. You are our helper and our strength. All things are possible through you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to me today. And again, I just like to greet you all, whether a mother or not, just enjoy the day. And to all the moms, happy Mother's Day.
Thank you for joining us for today's worship. Join us again next week for another lesson. If this service has blessed you, we would like to hear about it. Just send your stories. And if you want to support this ministry financially, message us at our GCF Montalban FB page. Once again, thank you. Have a blessed and fruitful week. God bless you.